Donald Trump believes in the Kushner hoodoo Kabbalah black magic. And just for the record, the military and the intelligence Q PSYOP network, they do not believe in black magic. Okay? But they will go along with anything as long as it keeps them in power and keeps those fake Federal Reserve notes coming from that magical money tree in the backyard. So, a lot of shit has gone down in the last month, and it's time for us to catch up on all this Machiavellian magic that is being shoved down our throats. Today's conversation will be long and semi-difficult, but hang in there. When it looks like I'm bouncing from one topic to another, please be patient and assume that I will tie it all together, or at least give you a head start on connecting all the dots on your own. Now, what are the dots? The dots that we're going to try to connect today are, number one, magic. Number two, non-career politicians. Number three, billionaires in the deep state. Number four, socialist like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Number five, fear and greed. And number six, we'll leave that for the 666 gang. So, what it really comes down to is we're looking at a battle, a battle between the billionaires versus the rest of us. And who do you think is going to win that battle? Well, nobody's going to win Everybody's going to lose because there is no wise Solomon anywhere to be found. There's nobody out there thinking logical. Everything that we hear on the media is a lie. Everything is smoke and mirrors. There is not one real person out there that is going to be running for president or is looking for any position of power. All the smart people are starting to run. The last chance we had was Dr. Ron Paul. Yes, the good doctor was our last chance of hope in America. And you know what they did to Dr. Ron Paul. Mainstream media pummeled him. They pummeled him. He didn't have a chance. And of course then, they stole some of his ideas and military intelligence ran with it, inserted Trump, and the rest is history. Oh, by the way, if you can read or understand any of these magical symbols that I have illustrated on the screen, then you will understand how the 666 gang operates better than your regular Joe Sixpack on Homeless Street. Yes, part of the story, part of the connect, some of the dots that we have to connect, we can never leave out the homeless people. You go to these major cities, and these homeless are camped out on the sidewalks. Do you care? Do I care? Well, what you and I care about means nothing. What do the billionaires care about? And apparently the billionaires don't care that at all the major U.S. cities, homeless people camped out on the streets begging for breadcrumbs. I always kind of talk about myself picking up the breadcrumbs. But I am very, very lucky, and I want to make sure everybody knows that. I do not work for the man, and I try to use my brains to survive, but I am extremely lucky. When I go and I see these homeless people on the streets, they're the ones who are really picking up the breadcrumbs. When I talk about it, I just talk about it metaphorically, but how sad is it? That the so-called, the so-called great country of America has so many homeless people on the streets. It's pathetic. But that's not what the main story is about today. But we can never forget about that. So let's get on with the main story. Just to be clear, the collapse is already here. It started in slow motion many years ago. I'm not even going to go into the dot-com collapse the housing bubble collapse, and how the 666 gang took all the money to Asia. We're not going to go over that again, because I've been over it a million times. So this slow motion train wreck is being hid behind smoke and mirrors. And they even threw in a little hope there. 
couple years ago by letting you jump on the Trump train and sit beside Q. That was all about giving you hope. But remember, Q gets government tax dollars. Yes, all these people in the military, the deep state, all these guys get huge salaries and pensions through the government, through the taxpayers. And all these people that have good jobs, you think on the lines of contractors, they're all connected to government fake tax dollars. So without this socialist government program, these contractor jobs and all these government job people, I mean, these losers would be homeless also, wouldn't they? So we got to add this to the equation. All these people who think they're so high and mighty in the deep state, the government jobs, all these Q people, I mean, they're all getting government checks. But I want them to remember one thing, and I don't want them ever to forget it. That without that government check, without those taxpayer dollars, you would be homeless. Just like the rest of them. And then the system, the equation gets compounded. And then the problem gets worse, times it by 666 million, all those government workers without a job, and now you know why the military is training to put FEMA camps up in two weeks. I mean, and there is no smoke and mirrors that can hide this collapse. Once all those government people lose their jobs, once this socialist, fascist, crony, capitalist system breaks down, I mean, there ain't, ain't no, no smoke going to hide this. And for anyone out there who thinks that World War III will bring us out of this mess, I mean, forget about that. Forget about it, because China and Russia could hit us so hard that your teeth would fall out before they even blacked out all our major cities. I mean, come on, get a, get a clue. I mean, please, generals, generals, wake up and smell the coffee, you ignorant, pathetic bastards. I mean, the whole world is in on this practical joke. The whole world is laughing at us. And it's about time we straightened our asses up. There needs to be Americans out there who put their finger in the faces of these pathetic leaders who think that they're somebody. They're arrogant. That's all they are. They're arrogant. And they're getting drunk on the hubris. But the shit is about ready to hit the fan. And of course, like I said, that's why we're talking about it today. We're trying to put all these dots together. We're trying to understand their magical illusion because that's all it is, is magic. Their, their whole control over us is through magic. And quite frankly, I'm getting sick and tired of it. And I know I've been rambling now for over eight minutes, but remember this. Those generals need some intel to help program that supercomputer called Q because the generals are too busy whining and dining with lobbyists and congressmen and senators and blah, blah, blah. So why don't we start it off talking about magic? A very important topic to discuss because they use this magic to di divert our attention away from the facts. And I hope I don't repeat myself later on what I'm about ready to say, but we really need to drive this home. You see, after Donald Trump pulled off that surprise win over the evil witch, Hillary, all I heard from behind the curtains was, wow, what a genius that 36-year-old slumlord Kushner is. Wow, he's a genius. He got, he got Trump elected, a long shot. The underdog, how did he do it? But it was just, it was sickening to hear all this stuff. But he was able to use the numbers that the magical Kabbalah guru priest gave him. And he took these numbers and he was able to convince Donald Trump that all this hoodoo magical stuff that Kushner was doing behind the scenes it was the reason why Donald Trump won, and Kushner was able to convince Donald Trump of this. Believe it or not, Donald Trump fell for all this horse shit. So magic is a very important factor in today's story, especially if the President of the United States believes in it. And let me tell you something, this hoodoo Kabbalah magic that Kushner and his priests practice 
will no doubt alarm all these Bible-thumping Q followers out there. But hey, sometimes we got to give you the truth, and the truth hurts sometimes. Sometimes I wonder about all these Q followers. They, they're, they say that they're Bible thumpers. They say they believe in Jesus. But then you got Kushner behind the scenes telling Trump what to do using hoodoo, Kabbalah, magic, horseshit. I mean, come on. This is ridiculous. So putting magic aside for the moment, I mean, the truth is and the truth was that the American people could not stand the witch Hillary Clinton. The American people despised all the career politicians. American military intelligence and the CIA knew this through their supercomputers. They ran with it. They inserted the non-career politician Donald Trump into the race. They gave him as much free media attention as he could get. I mean, remember, the CIA controls mainstream media, and the rest is history. Kushner had nothing to do with it. But somehow, Kushner was able to brainwash and manipulate Donald Trump behind the scenes. And in just one time, I would like military intelligence and Q to admit that Kushner is a fake and he practices black magic. And if you find all this talk distasteful, if you think, oh, you believe in Jesus and all this is mumbo jumbo hoodoo voodoo stuff is not for you, well, if you think Jesus sent Trump a message, to do the State of the Union on the Chinese New Year. Well, hell, you might as well just turn off this video and immediately go find a Kardashian's channel because that's leading us to our next topic, the State of the Empire, which, uh, quite frankly, is struggling. But can you imagine the big, bad, tough Donald Trump taking orders from little old girly like Nancy Pelosi? I mean, come on. It's all smoke and mirrors. Donald Trump, he had to delay the State of the Union because little old Nancy Pelosi told him so. I mean, does that even remotely remind you of the big, bad, tough Trump that everybody elected? No. Not at all. So while we're on the subject of magic, do you think it is a coincidence that the Kushners are teaching their spoiled little rugrats how to speak Chinese, and Ivanka made a small fortune employing Chinese slave labor at Chinese factories, making a new millionaire in China every day? Every day a new millionaire in China is rising up, thanks to people like Ivanka and the 666 gang. But we're not going to But anyhow, do you think it's a coincidence knowing all of that that Donald Trump picks the Chinese New Year to do the state of the empire address? I mean seriously. Do you think this is a coincidence or <laughs> Do you think it's more likely that Nancy Pelosi is an actress playing a role and Jared Kushner has been in contact with his mystical, magical Kabbalah hoodoo priest to conjure up some Asian takeover? Because that's exactly what it is. Donald Trump is sending a message to the world. When he does the State of the Empire on the Chinese New Year, trust me, I know exactly what it means. And this might be a good time to move from one magical trick to another magical trick. And I'm talking about how the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel creates billionaires out of thin air, and they create millions and millions of homeless people living under the bridge. And, and how funny is this, or mo actually how pathetic is it, that all those homeless people living under the bridge have no idea that a fake magical Federal Reserve banking cartel put them under the bridge, while at the same time promoting billionaires to obscene riches. I mean, the irony of the shame. The fact is, the billionaires and people like Kushner have no shame, which leads us to the next topic, that the billionaires are running scared. And I mean it's going to a different level of scaredness. So, if I had to guess, about two or three years ago, the billionaires were on a scared level of about four. When you're talking about a one to ten scale, 
I'd say about a four, but that was two or three years ago. And the afraid factor has risen a lot higher lately. I mean, think about it. After socialist Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez won, I mean, she is now asking, why should there be any billionaires at all when you have homeless people by the millions living under the bridge? I mean, this is a moral question that has the billionaires running scared. And now you know why I brought up the subject of the homeless people. Because we have a battle here. I mean, think about it. It is obscene. This is one thing that Ocasio has correct. I mean, we're dealing with a crony capitalistic system, which she will never use the word crony because she's one of the cronies now. But when you're dealing with a Federal Reserve banking cartel that have put Donald Trump in position of power and they have put Ocasio-Cortez in a position of power. We're talking about crony capitalism. They're going to get rich beyond our wildest imaginations, and most of us are going to be living from paycheck to paycheck, picking up the breadcrumbs, metaphorically, and then you've got millions and millions living under the bridge, actually picking up breadcrumbs, and then you have the battle between the classes. And this is where it gets really interesting, because like I said, the billionaires are running scared. And you might ask yourself at this point, where in the hell are you going with this, Bravo? And I'll tell you where I'm going with it. Have you just heard lately, what's his name? Mr. Starbucks himself? Yeah, Howard Schultz. That's his name, and he thinks he's going to be running for president. And you may be asking yourself, why in the hell would this billionaire, I think he's a billionaire, why is he running for president when he has no chance of winning on numerous levels? I mean, I don't have to go into you. He, if you profile Howard Schultz, he's just not winnable. But why is he entering the race or even thinking about it? And that's our next topic here. Like I said, because the billionaires are running scared. Like I said, what I said before, I think a couple, two or three years ago, their scared level was about a four. Now I believe their scared, le their scared level was up around six or seven. So they are worried. And they want to stay in power. They don't want to run. So it's not that Schultz thinks he can win, but they believe... And they're getting this from military intelligence. They believe that an independent party can win in the future. Maybe not in 2020, but the independent party candidate is coming. These billionaires want to be in control of everything. I mean, think about the arrogance of that. They already control the two-party system. But that's not good enough for them. The American people are so fed up with this two-party system, which is actually just a one-party system controlled by the 666 gang, the American people are waking up. The billionaires feel the heat, but they're not going to run. No, they're not going to run away from little old Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. They're not going to run away from this little socialist girl. They're going to try to take control of the third party, the independent party. So they're going to put in the smoke and mirrors. That's what Howard Schultz is, the smoke and mirrors. That's what that guy Bloomberg is, another billionaire, Bloomberg. All they want to do is muddy up the waters. Think about it. These people are not stupid. They're billionaires, for God's sake. So Schultz and Bloomberg know that they don't have a chance in hell of winning. Not one chance, but they want to be con in control of an independent party because they know the two-party system is collapsing. The billionaires do not want to run to some castle in England, so they want to be in control of the independent party. I know what I've said that about five times now. That's what this Schultz and Bloomberg thing is all about. Okay, so why don't we dig into this billionaire magic just a little bit more. I mean, what's worse than a career politician? Well, I'll tell you what's worse, and that would be a billionaire elite class that buy the cheap fake politicians for millions in chump change. So again, 
there's only one thing worse than a fake career politician, and that's the billionaires who control them. So why, I mean, I'll ask this question one more time. Why does a billionaire asshole that sells genetically modified coffee to the unwashed masses, why would he run for the presidency when he has no chance of winning? Well, we've already been through that. But okay, but now you might be saying there might be some Trump supporters out there and say, oh, oh, oh wait, a, wait a minute, bro. wait one minute there, bravo. Okay, if you're, you think your theory is correct there, I mean, how did this uh, so-called billionaire reality TV star Trump win? How did he win? Okay, well, that's easy. Let's go into that real quick. Number one, Trump pretended to be a gentle Gentile. We found out after he was elected in April that he was not so gentle. Number two, yes, he was a non-career politician, and the people are sick of the corrupt career politicians. Big factor there. And number three, we've talked about this earlier, Donald Trump was able to hide, and I'll repeat, he was able to hide all the 666 gang, like Kushner and the Goldman Sachs scum, when he was campaigning. Most of the people who voted for Trump had no idea. Seriously, you talk to the people who voted for Trump, none of them had any idea that there was a Kushner behind the curtains pulling and pulling the strings. I mean, nobody knew that there was a Kushner hiding in the shadows. He didn't come out till April. Kushner really didn't come out from the shadows until April after Donald Trump come, walked into the White House. And we know what happened in April. That didn't work out too good for the Trump regime. They had to start backtracking because what they did in April had nothing to do with what he campaigned on. And we're not going to go there, but it's... Uh, we found out in April, the first year that Donald Trump took over, we found out in April that he was a fake. <laughs> and, it, and it took dumbass Ann Coulter two years to figure it out. I mean, here's the bottom line. There's no way in hell that Howard Schultz will be able to pull off the gentle illusion that the fake Trump did. Trump was able to pull off some magic because he hid the 666 gang in the shadows. And okay, maybe... Maybe they did pull off a little bit of magic there. But uh, there's no way in hell that Howard Schultz is going to be able to pull off that illusion. So, okay, one more thing on the billionaires before we close out the billionaire segment, okay? We know they're running scared. They're scared of the socialists who are finally speaking up, who are saying, hey, there's too many poor people out there, and these billionaires have obscene. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not a socialist. I am for capitalism, but I am for the real capitalism that America was based on, okay? I knew a few of those millionaires way back in the day, and they were good people. There were some good millionaires in the 50s and the 60s, and you know what their goal was back then? It was to put Americans back to work. I was just talking to my brother about this yesterday, and I'll, and I'll throw in a personal story. My grandfather, who was a World War II veteran, he struggled. He lived through the Great Depression. He was a he uh, was a tough man, and he worked on the Ohio River. I'll tell you what his job was. He was a crane operator. They had this big piece of machinery, and they would put the old cars, you know, the old rusted cars that came from the junkyard. They would put them in this compactor, and you've seen them. Uh, the compactor would smash the car into a cube and my grandfather was the crane operator and he would pick up that cube and put it where it was supposed to go and I'm pretty sure all that scrap steel would go to the uh, steel mills and they would uh, scrap it out and you know make new steel for new cars and the, and the system worked perfect you had the steel mills going you had my grandfather uh, scrapping the metal and doing the recycling and then you had my dad in the coal mine, and you had all these factories going. My bottom, the bottom line to my story is there were millionaires who thought it was important to keep Americans back to work. The personal story I was going to tell you about was when my grandmother passed away, the owner of the company, his name was Strauss, he came over to my grandfather's house, which was a very, very modest, poor house, 
And there we all sat on the porch. Us, we weren't really poor people, but we were not rich. And there we were talking to this millionaire Strauss who took the time and the effort. And it was a good gesture on his part to come over there. And, um, and I got the feeling as a teenager listening to the millionaire and my grandfather, you know, shoot the shit. He was showing his respect. But I got the feeling that the system worked, that there was a place for everybody, even poor people like my grandfather. There was a place for him. But I don't see that today. No, what I see today are billionaires that sell genetically modified coffee to the unwashed masses. I see them taking advantage of the poor people. That's what I see. And it even gets worse. I mean, it's not good enough that we're poor and they have billions. No, they take the abuse one step further. Like billionaires like Zuckerberg, who actually track your every move. And they sell your information. So there it is in a nutshell. They don't want you in a steel mill anymore. They don't want you in a good factory job, or they don't want you to have a crane operator job. No, they want you sitting in a coffee shop, paying $5 for a Starbucks cappuccino while you're on the computer. And Zuckerberg tracks your every move, and then he sells your every move. Every move that you make, everything you think or say or do, he sells it to another 666 operator. And what I see is nothing but abuse and tyranny. Okay, this, seriously, this is the last thing on the billionaires. So they know we're struggling. They know that they have everything, and they know we're struggling. Will they invest millions in a universal basic income to get the homeless off the streets? And... I must say this. I mean, when you're talking about universal basic income, you're also that means also that you're going to put out put out of work all the silly government workers. All those government workers that are sitting behind a desk doing nothing. Think of the welfare system. They also have to be put out of work. That's how a universal basic income system works. If if you leave all those government workers in place sitting in sitting behind a desk doing nothing, basically a welfare job, if you leave all those government workers there, then of course a universal basic income will not work. The UBI works only if you eliminate all those government jobs, and then those government pathetic government workers who dole out all the applications and the fees and the fines and the red tape, they will then be put on a universal basic income. So all the government workers will have to learn how to survive on a universal basic income, just like the homeless. The homeless should have a universal basic income, so they're not homeless. I mean, this is just basic common sense. They put trillions and trillions of dollars over there in a black hole, but they will not help their own people. So are the billionaires going to go for the universal basic income? No. What they want to do is invest their millions in a third party, being in control. So they're going to put those millions of dollars in the Democratic Party. Actually, it was a billion. I think they, they invested over a billion dollars in Hillary Clinton, the loser. Can you imagine putting a billion dollars into the, <laughs> into the loser Hillary Clinton? They probably, Donald Trump may not have put in a, they might not have bet a billion on Donald Trump. But it was huge amounts of money on the Repugs and the Democrats. So now they're going to put all, some more billions into an independent party. They're going to fight this. They're going to fight this universal basic income all the way. And, it, and why am I bringing this up? This is what's making the billionaires scared. They are scared to death. And that's probably the only good news I have for you today. And one more thing on how stupid these Kabbalah-loving, magic-searching morons are. I mean, think about what Chris Christie has just said recently. He came out with the news that apparently Donald Trump and Kushner both figured out, all on their own, all on their own, of course, that by firing General Flynn, that would take care of the Russia probe. 
I mean, seriously, did they really believe that by firing a guy who would then have reason to flip to the other side? I mean, hell, I, I don't even want to go into this. I mean, like, like Forrest Gump said, I mean, stupid is as stupid does. And I hope I don't have to say or talk about the Mueller investigation, what it's really about, which is a mafia investigation, because by now even a fifth grader could figure that one out. And while we're on the subject of mafia, gangsters, criminals, and psychopaths, <laughs> really quickly, if you want to know why the CIA and the 666 gang and Donald Trump is supporting Juan Guaido, well, I hope you know who this guy is. I think he's down, he's down in Venezuela, and the CIA wants to put him in power in Venezuela. I mean, all, you don't have to go any farther than to profile his ears. I mean, check out his ears and how similar they are to these other pillars of the community. I mean, this is just basic profiling 101. But, again, this is just a rule of thumb. Not everybody who has low set ears is a criminal. Not everybody. We're just talking about percentages here. A high percentage. You, yeah, you do your own research into uh, mass murderers. And, you know, do you, you do your own math here? But, I mean... Uh, oh, you didn't know? You didn't know that Ivanka Ivanka was a psycho, huh? You didn't know that. Well, I mean, why else would she seek presidential powers when she's in her 30s? I mean, what do normal 30-year-old girls do? I mean, number one, they should be taking care of their children. But no, she wants to walk into the Oval Office. Ah, she wants to walk into the highest office of the land. And that's exactly what happened. Donald Trump put a golden spoon in her mouth, and now she's walking around Washington, D.C. like she's the sweatshop princess. Okay, we'll talk about other criminals that want to walk into the White House. Not, not everybody is born with a silver spoon like Ivanka. Some of them are born with a silver... I mean, um, well, well, some of them just have to sleep their way to the top. Yeah, we don't have much time to go into this lady, but she wants to be the next president of the United States, and she believes, well, it's in her birthright. Or, I mean, well, she earned it. She earned it. It's not her birthright. She earned it, damn it. She, she had to go down. I mean, she really had to do some tough things to get in positions of power. Okay. You talk about a screwed up world. It's imbalanced. I mean, think about it. I mean, they get half the money. They got all the poontang, and now they want all the power. Now they want all the, I mean, okay. So we had to add a little bit. I think what was, when we were connecting the dots, what was number five? Number five was fear and greed. I think we should add sex to that. Fear, greed, and sex. So when we were connecting all the dots, the magical dots, the non-career politician dots, the billionaires in a deep state, the socialist, all the dots. Okay, in closing. If Donald Trump survives two more years, and that's a big, big if, or if he's smart like LBJ in 1968, and he says that he will not seek re-election. So those are two of Donald Trump's options. I mean, he could be removed. A thousand different ways he could be removed. Or, like I say, if he's smart enough to do like LBJ LBJ did, and, uh, you know, he does not seek re-election, well, then, you know, that'll be what it'll be. But there's also option number six, and that is that Kushner talks Trump into running for re-election, even though the wall promise failed. And that's the big deal right there. I mean, could anybody imagine Donald Trump being re-elected if the wall was not built? I mean, that's what he got, re that's what he got elected on, the wall. But it's possible, like I said, option number six, that Kushner talks Trump into going for the re-election. And Kushner will probably reassure Trump that the hoodoo Kabbalah priest will work the magic. <laughs> work the magic. And that's where we're at today. That was our conversation. It's all magic. It's all smoke and mirrors. They're shoving up our you-know-what. You okay, it's still early in the game, but I'll give you my opinion if uh, Kushner is able to talk Donald Trump into re-election or, you know, he survives the two years. Here's my opinion. The only two people who could get in the race that could compete with Donald Trump are Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. I mean, they're the only two that could are up for the race. All the others are Bush League wannabes. That's my opinion.
Take it for what it's worth. 